So I am going right now, I'm getting on a plane, I'm flying to New Orleans. I'm gonna do a bunch of things while I'm in New Orleans. I'm gonna see a bunch of family. I'm gonna check out some Mardi Gras parades. Uh, we love South Louisiana, it's an amazing place. It's also a great place for music. I'm gonna go see my friend Evan. He has finished the Razzmatazma Caster. Also, I do want to give you the update on the challenge. I wanna tell you about how I went from $500 and in three moves, I am now up to $1,120. So here are the flips so far. First, bought a twin reverb for $450, sold it for $650, $200 profit, boom, 20 bucks to St. Jude's. Flip number two, bought a 66 Fender Champ for $400, sold that for $550, boom, $15 to St. Jude's. If you wanna join with me, every time I sell a guitar and I make money on it, 10% of what I make goes to St. Jude's because we believe that the world is a better place when kids aren't sick and parents don't have to worry about paying for their kids' medical treatment. The third flip, and this one happened so fast I couldn't bring you along. It was a 1999 Fender Telecaster with a blonde finish and rosewood neck. It was great, it was a really great guitar. I bought it for $400 and I sold it for $700. So that's a $300 profit, so that means 30 more dollars. And that brings me up to a total of $1,150 in one flip. I'm well on my way. It's kind of surprising. And this has me thinking. There are two ways I can do this challenge. One could be just kind of the boring way, which is there are guitars and amps that you find all the time that are predictably found and you can always make money on. Like, you can always find Hot Rod Deluxes and you can always find them for 300 bucks or 350 and then you can always sell them for 400 up to 450 but that's a really boring way to do the challenge. It's not super exciting content. So what I'm gonna do is kind of dig into the expertise of all of the guitars that I bought and sold, and as I find cool things, I'm just gonna bring you along uh, for the ride. I'm gonna try and do it in cool and exciting ways. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to let it dry for like a month or so. It's been a week. This is Evan. Evan is awesome, super talented, uh, good friend. We've become friends over the last couple years. And uh, Evan made this amazing purple sparkle guitar. Have I told you? I'm calling this the Razzmatazma caster. The Razzmatazma. Which is stupid when you try and spell it. Each time on Instagram, I'm like, why did I do this? Autocorrect. So dumb. But it's amazing. I'm super excited. It's going to have a bunch of gold hardware on it. We put abalone. Basically, we had like two parts from this guy that neither of us knew who was building guitars. And we were able to get a body and a neck and all these parts, but they didn't quite fit together until we had this idea of like, let's just make like a super ridiculous, funky, strat, jazz master shape. Well, I'm not gonna do anything with it for a while. Yeah, just like laying it down. If you can, can hang, hang it? it, yeah, if you I'll, can. I'll hang it. So what was, the, what was the process of finishing this one? I guess I did the glitter and then a ton of epoxy to bury it. I've seen- Did you have to sand off the old finish? There wasn't a finish. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. There was like some like goop that maybe was like a sealer that I That's sanded off was. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't much. Cause mm -hmm. I've seen people do it with just straight lacquer and like after a month of the lacquer curing, you got like grip tape feeling. Cause it's such a big body too. Like it was one of those like, I didn't know what to do with it from the beginning. Mm. Like, well, it's kind of a jazz master or like, yeah, I don't know what that is. It is a jazz master just with different pickup setup. Everybody check out Evan at, uh, at Rude Guitars on Instagram and just amazing, great guitars. Super cool, no two are the same. So it's time to pack up, it's time to head back to Virginia. Uh, I've got the body here. So 
it hung up most of the night. And um, so now I'm gonna put it into my suitcase. And um, this is not the ideal situation, but the safest way that I've figured how to get this guitar back to Virginia is for me to carry it on with me in my roller bag. Oh boy. Oh, it could not fit more snugly. Hey, you saw me wear this shirt the other day. Continuity. I kind of can't believe that that works. It's it's such a giant body and it works. Evan, I'm doing, oh shoot. I haven't put the neck in there yet. Let's see if the neck fits. All right, so it turns out I'm gonna have to pack up the neck separately. I'm either gonna ship it to myself. That might be my best bet. My wife is coming home in a couple days, but she's coming home with two kids and, um, it's just going to be too much to ask of hers. I'm not in a huge rush to do it, and I really just don't want to mess it up. Let's not take a risk we don't have to take. So at the very last second getting on my plane, they said that I needed to, uh, that I was going to need to check my bag. Check bag. So let's see how that goes with a guitar in it. It should be fine. Right, Evan? Should be fine. Let's see if this thing made it. I'm sure it did. Here we go. It made it. It's great. It's so sparkly. So this was fun. It was stressful. Uh, flying with a guitar that is custom made. There's not another one like it. It's uh, two years in the making. It's made by a dear friend. It has tons of uh, nostalgic value, but um, it's here and now it's time to hang it up and Evan is making pickups for it. He's got the bridge for it He's got some bushings for it. I've got some pieces and some parts, so it's gonna be a little while I'm Jeremy. I'm the guitar hunter. I hope you go and you find badass guitars. You make great friends along the way. Thanks for watching uh, Time to hang up this guitar <laughs>